Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. <laughs> um, yeah, so folks are always talking about Occupy and how Occupy doesn't have any demands or there's no clear leadership and don't have clear demands. It clearly is pointing out the economic inequality, the 99% imagery, the homelessness, the poor people working class issues, labor unions, uh, and the like. So that is definitely one quality in the Occupy movement. Uh, but to be more specific, there's been a lot of ideas, and since there are so many ideas, it has been hard to actually nail down a list of ten. Have like a um, you know a Black Panther. Uh, for self-defense, the, the uh, Black Panther Party for self-defense have like a 10-point plan. Like them, 10 points just makes it nice and concise and easy, and you can kind of pass it around and talk to people about it and say, hey, you know, my candidate has a 10-point plan. What does your candidate have? Well, um, I think I've come up with a couple 10-point plans, two of them actually, um, just, just, uh, just for ideas. I haven't got it passed by... Occupy or any, anybody for that matter. <laughs> uh, but I have come up with a list, and I called it the dubbed it the Kentucky Revolutions. Kentucky Revolutions, which was Thomas Jefferson had filed the Kentucky Resolutions legislation in order to spearhead the debate between who has more power, the federal government, America, or the state government, Kentucky, Indiana, the other ones. So. Uh, the Kentucky Resolutions is what I drafted. And uh, so those are the ideas that I believe, and those would be the ideas that I carry to the Occupy movement. Uh, Cindy Sheehan, that was based on Cindy Sheehan's list that she used when she ran for, uh, against uh, Nancy Pelosi, so for House of Representatives. Um, but here on uh, the website, the 99declaration.org, they have a draft position, a new declaration, a petition for a redress of grievances. They want a Continental Congress 2.0. So we're going to have a convention. We're going to have a constitutional convention. And the constitutional convention will draft a new constitution and explain the ideas uh, that we actually want. And again, the website is the 99declaration.org. And I'm just going to go down and, and read it. So... Whereas the First Amendment to the Constitution provides that the people have the right to petition their government for a redress of grievances, be it resolved that we, the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union of, by, and for the people, have convened a new Continental Congress this week of July 4, 2012, in the city of Philadelphia. We have deliberated, drafted, and ratified this petition for a redress of grievances to be served upon the United States Congress. Supreme Court and President prior to November 6, 2011. Our country is beset by problems too great to fit comfortably under the constructs of liberal, independent, or conservative rubrics. No single label fits, no single ideology suits, but what we have all in common, left, right, and center, is that we are all being marginalized and defeated as we struggle for life, liberty, happiness, comfort, and health. The institutional and government policies pursued by the moneyed interest of the elite 1% have destroyed the ability of our government to guarantee the rights and meet the needs of the people. The elite 1% have enjoyed inordinate power and influence over our lives as they inundate us with the propaganda through their media conglomerates and extract the wealth of our nation only to deposit outside of the country. All the while, like Mitt Romney, all the while they are delighted by our inability to recognize and address our common plight in any meaningful way. No more. No longer. We're the truckers, the teachers, the first responders, the engineers, the self-employed, the unemployed, the off-grid and organic farmers, as well as the cutting-edge, fully-wired digital entrepreneurs. We're the butchers, the bakers, the builders, and the makers. We're the foundation and the lifeblood of this country. We, as representatives of our congressional district, districts across this great nation, gathered in Philadelphia for a cause much greater than ourselves. If we are to succeed in renewing our democracy in the name of the people, we must put aside the petty partisan differences that might divide us. We must recognize that many of those differences have been created, demonstrated, and amplified by the 1% in their efforts to maintain control and increase their own profits at the expense of the rest of us. It is to be expected that we will not agree on everything, 
But on this one thing, we all agree. American government cannot continue to be sold to the highest bidder. No more public auctions for our democracy. 236 years ago, another group of Americans joined together in Philadelphia over the days leading up to what we now proudly call Independence Day. Those Georgia planners, New York bankers, Massachusetts lawyers, and Virginia scholars had radical, radical differences and very little in common when they began, but they finished by signing a declaration that gave birth to our great nation and changed the world. We too can change the world by renewing their vision and reestablishing the principles of our democracy. We, the delegates of the Continental Congress 2.0, representing representative to our congressional districts throughout our nation who convened July 4th of this year, 2012, on behalf of the people, people hereby petition the government of the United States of America for redress of the following grievances. Section 1. Whereas our freedom of speech and the right to a government of the people, for the people, and by the people have been corrupted by the influence of money, whereas the rights of organizations, including but not limited to corporations, nation states, labor unions, and other collected bodies sharing mutual interests, are they not the, the same as living human beings in our government has allowed such organizations to have undue influence over policy decisions affecting the people? We therefore demand the following. A constitutional amendment stating that no single organization shall have more influence over our government than that of a citizen and only... An individual human being may have full citizens' rights and personhood. Speech within the United States shall remain free and not for purchase. The unrestrained spending that influences decisions made by voters and our representatives shall be strictly regulated to ensure a fair and balanced government for all. Section 2. Whereas the people have been disenfranchised by an election system that is unjustly weighted in favor of the major political parties, and beset with an enormous cost of financing campaigns for office. Whereas this destructive election system has subverted our democracy as a myriad of state restrictions is currently organized in a way that is detrimental to optimal voter participation and responsible citizenship. Whereas campaign finance regulations and the current laws governing elections in the United States have resulted in a government of, by, and for the elites. Whereas this system is dysfunctional and capable of making sufficient progress on behalf of the people. We therefore demand the following, legislation to establish all polling days, election days, federal, state, municipal, and otherwise, to be weekends or holidays. Election days should be a holiday. We should have an election week, an entire week-long holiday, starting November 1st to the 6th, should just be a holiday. Let's get off work, go outside, enjoy some democracy. Come on, America. Number two. Regulations to establish easier and more uniform absentee voting processes. New standardized laws to ban all rules in the states that hinder the right of the people to vote. There should be no tests, special IDs, or fees required to vote in a national election. Legislation to establish a permanent voter roll to be created and maintained by the Social Security Administration will also distribute free voter photo identification for use in federal elections. So, a voter roll will be created and maintained by the Social Security Administration. So, that's an important voter roll list. Um, but that's the um, 99 Declaration. So, number five, legislation to establish a nonpartisan commission or politically neutral group to redraw district lines based on geographical borders, which are compact, contiguous, reflective of socioeconomic demographics. Regulations to ensure that no political party shall be privileged or receive special advantage in any state for their candidates running for Congress or the presidency. Legislation to require publicly financed and funded campaigns for sufficiently popular candidates running for elected office and requiring radio and TV broadcasters to provide free and equal airtime to those candidates. Number eight, legislation establishing that no contributor shall be permitted to contribute more than 100 times the federal minimum wage per year to federal campaigns or political action committees. Legislation number nine, legislation number nine, section two of the demands of the 99 percent. Legislation to guarantee transparency and accuracy of vote tabulation in elections. Free and fair elections. Same thing William Justice Goble was for. The Kentuckian, the German Kentuckian who was slain in 1900 you know, on the Capitol steps by the Confederates, by the WASP, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants who have been killing Indians and burning witches and has been still wrecking the country today. Pat Robertson and his followers. 
So, voting machines should be abolished unless votes are verified from the beginning of the process to the end. Voting machines should be abolished <laughs> unless the votes are verified from the beginning pro of the process to the end. Legislation or regulations to establish that senators will not serve consecutive six-year terms and representatives shall not serve more than two two-year terms consecutive. So senators can only have one six-year term. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is Kentucky's Mubarak, okay? Mitch McConnell, you're the Mubarak. You're the one that should be in the cage. You have ruined America. You have put America going in the wrong direction just because you've got a good earmark system where you can rob the American taxpayer and give it to Kentucky is the only reason you've been able to stay in there. So it's because of socialism. Mitch McConnell, the only good thing about you was the socialism you was bringing in. Now that Rand Paul's there, you talking bad about the earmarks and all the money you brought in. So we should change the Mitch McConnell Center name to uh, the capitulate and flip flop like a little bitch center. I think that'd be a good name. Mitch McConnell. You're our fucking Mubarak, Mitch McConnell. How long has Mitch McConnell been in office? I'm Wikipedia in your ass. Mitch McConnell has been in office has been in uh, Kentucky senator for a ton, for a long time. It's a dictatorship. We should have ditched Mitch before we even had a chance to get in the fucking... Oh my god, he looks like such a turtle. <laughs> That's my Miss McConnell impersonation. <laughs> so, he assumed office on January 3rd, 1985. 1985, so plus 20, 2005, plus 7. <laughs> 27. Mitch McConnell, 27 years you've been in office. 20 fucking 7 years. You've been in office for 27 years. Mubarak was in a cage, okay? You should be in a cage. You should not be the senator of Kentucky anymore. You should have been senator past 1991. Uh, the last 30 years, they've, the American government has declared war on the American worker, and you've been in there for 27 years? Is that a coincidence? I don't fucking think so. You've been in there cutting wages, pushing the minimum wage down, cutting health care programs, cut education programs. You've been in there declaring war, killing innocent people, bailing out the banks. Everything that you stand for, I'm against. I hate everything that you stand for. Every bit of policy that you come up with. You embarrass me as a Kentuckian. As a Kentucky person, you embarrass me, Mitch McConnell. Okay? You're an embarrassment to this state. Fuck you, Mitch. You should be in a cage like Mubarak. <laughs> He's the longest serving U.S. Senator in Kentucky history. Member of the Republican Party. The minority leader of the Senate. He was born in Tuscumbia. Alabama? Oh my god, no wonder he's such a racist, such a white supremacist. He's an Alabama knight from Alabama. No wonder there's Alabama sediments. Now you brought that fucking bullshit up here. We know what you do, Alabama. We know all about you, Alabama. What you did to fucking Martin Luther King. Put him in fucking jail. Jesus Christ. Birmingham? Uh, Birmingham? What's the other one? Alabama? Birmingham? Some other place? There's two cities in Alabama. We remember you're beating up Martin Luther King, throwing him against the counters, arresting him, dragging him away like he was nothing. So, yeah, yeah, great legacy you bring up here, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, yeah, right. Fucking dick. <laughs> All right, so legislation or regulation established that senators cannot serve consecutive six-year terms. So no consecutive you could re-ran if you wanted to, Mitch. Uh, but 27 years. You've, you've done enough damage, okay? You've fucked Kentucky enough. You've exploited Kentucky. You've exploited the ignorance and the lack of education. You've got reelected. You've used your entrenched moneyed interest to get reelected several times. You've had your run, okay? You know, go fucking retire. Go on a fucking farm and enjoy life. Um, you know, spend some of the millions of dollars you helped steal from uh, the Kentucky and American taxpayers. Trillions of dollars in debt, and your capitalism is what crashed our economy. And you're for the Bush tax cuts, the Patriot Act, you're for the war on drugs, you're for uh, uh, the Empire Wars, you're for, you're, you're for every, every bad thing, you're against health care, you're, you're a shitty human being. <laughs> you suck. Fuck you, Mitch McConnell. You piece of shit. <laughs>